The story begins with a middle-aged man named Sasaki taking out the trash. His neighbor Odonari wishes him good morning, and he responds kindly. Sasaki then goes to work by train, where a co-worker asks for help with a report. Sasaki suggests improvements and offers to handle the report, making his junior happy. While at work, Sasaki hears about a colleague adopting a cat, sparking his interest. He watches a cute cat video and wishes he could have a pet. Sasaki talks about his average size company, where he barely makes enough money but feels fulfilled contributing to society. Later, Sasaki declines a dinner invitation from his junior due to money issues. After work, he buys dinner at a convenience store, loses a lottery, and returns home to the welcoming little girl. The scene shifts to Sasaki at a pet store, checking out cats and wishing he could afford one. He hears a bird chirping like it's saying, pick me, and finds a java sparrow for 3,000 yen. Sasaki brings the sparrow home and places it in its cage, finding it really cute. While pondering a name for the sparrow, it suddenly reveals its name, claiming to be from another world and a star sage. Sasaki marvels at the bird's talkativeness, wondering if it's normal for its species. Despite the bird's apparent discontent with the name, Sasaki decides to call it Peeps, finding its displeasure cute. Surprised by his ability to communicate with a bird, Sasaki recalls the pet shop's claim that Peeps could be trained for human contact. Curious about a Java Sparrow's communication skills, Sasaki engages Peeps in conversation and asks about dinner preferences. Peeps expresses a desire for Kobe beef shadow bond, a luxurious choice suggested by someone named Yamada at the pet shop. Sasaki, astounded by the bird's requests, apologizes for his financial limitations. Acknowledging that he can't afford the expensive meat, Sasaki apologizes to Peeps and suggests pork ribs instead. Peeps reveals that he was exiled from another world and got a new life in his current bird form. He suggests living life as one wishes, emphasizing the fleeting nature of existence. Sasaki agrees, realizing the futility of conforming to societal norms and the inevitability of facing one's own end. Peeps seeks Sasaki's help, claiming that with his assistance, accumulating wealth will be easy. Sasaki, eager to help, agrees, and Peeps uses magic to forge a connection between them. Peeps explains that Sasaki can now use his powers. Following Peeps' instructions, Sasaki opens the cage, and Peeps sits on his shoulder. Peeps uses magic to transport Sasaki to another world, specifically the provincial town of Betrium in the kingdom of hers, where Peeps used to live. The scene shifts to Sasaki at his office the next day, appearing early due to a supposed train delay. His junior, surprised, inquires about Sasaki's prompt arrival and proposes starting a new business venture together. Sasaki, taken aback, requests time to think. He mentions adopting a pet, leading to skepticism from his junior. Despite the disbelief, Sasaki is not lying, and his life has taken a new direction since his encounter with Peeps. Sasaki decides to follow Peep's idea of interworld business. He purchases items for trading in the other world, aiming to start with local merchants before targeting upper-class nobles. Sasaki wins a chocolate bar in a lottery and returns home. Hearing the little girl's hungry stomach, he gives her the chocolate. Sasaki then ventures into the other world, visiting the Herman Trading Company run by local nobles, to begin his new business endeavor. Sasaki asks Peeps if he should bring him to the company and Peeps suggests he can be claimed as Sasaki's familiar. Sasaki sells the items he brought from the other world for 400 gold coins, equivalent to 400 million yen. The president, Mark, inquires about the source of the unique items, and Sasaki promises exclusivity in exchange for secrecy. Continuing his interworld business, Sasaki explores the local food and receives magical lectures from Peeps. Attempting to learn teleportation, he decides to take things slow. During a break at the office, Sasaki practices spell casting, accidentally triggering the fire alarm. Later, he shares the incident with Peeps, who notes Sasaki's high affinity for magic. Sasaki, inspired by the idea of starting an eatery, encounters a skilled cook named French, fired unjustly from his previous job. Sasaki proposes opening a new store together, and with Mark's assistance, they set up an eatery on the town's main road. Sasaki pays French's wages, and they launch the eatery. During lunch with Peeps, Sasaki explains that the eatery serves both their purposes, providing food for Peeps and reducing Sasaki's expenses. Peeps questions Sasaki about prospects for promotion in his world, and Sasaki reveals the lack of growth in his pay over the last five years. Sasaki continues practicing magic, mastering various elemental spells but struggling with teleportation. The scene shifts to Sasaki buying hunting equipment, as hunting becomes popular among nobles. 
Sasaki purchases binoculars and a Swiss army knife, selling them to Mark at a profitable price. This success contributes to Sasaki's plan to do business with the nobles. Afterwards, Sasaki visits Viscount Muller, the noble governing the land. The Viscount discreetly inspects the goods, prompting Sasaki to realize the importance of being selective in his product choices. Muller then mentions hearing that Sasaki is from another continent, and questions if these goods are commonplace or considered exclusive items, possibly restricted to the nobility. Sasaki explains that only a select few possess these goods, leaving Muller to wonder if Sasaki holds high status. Sasaki, recognizing the need for a careful response, describes himself as a craftsman who drifted to this continent after a shipwreck. He clarifies that the goods he brought today and newly made ones are his creations. Muller comprehends and proposes that Sasaki sell his goods to the Herman Trading Company while also providing some directly to him. He assures Sasaki of an extra incentive and grants him permission to enter the mansion at any time. Muller encourages Sasaki to inform him of anything beneficial for his territory. Satisfied with his sales, magical learning, and restaurant management, Sasaki feels his relaxing life in the other world taking shape. He then holds his own farewell party, when news of a random attacker on the loose is reported. Curious about Sasaki's thoughts on going independent, his junior inquires during the festivities. Sasaki is puzzled by his junior's insistence on him joining, attributing it to his recent surge in energy. He thinks it might be due to his new bed, which has improved his sleep quality. Sasaki contemplates sleeping more often in the other world where the bed is more spacious and luxurious, realizing his current bed feels cramped. After the party, on his way home, Sasaki dodges ice shards and witnesses a man using superpowers to harm a woman. Concerned for her safety, he intervenes by attacking the man with an ice shard. However, Sasaki is unsure how to stop the freezing spell. The woman, wielding a gun, questions Sasaki about being a psychic and his origin. Sasaki admits to using the ice shard, and the woman turns the ice into water, expressing disbelief that a stray psychic saved her. Curious about Sasaki's abilities, the woman, mentioning an organization, invites him to come with her, assuring him she won't harm him. Sasaki wonders if they are magicians like him and contemplates the possibility of others from Peep's world being present. He requests to go home first and change clothes. Sasaki shares the events with Peeps, who mentions not sensing any mana from the woman. Peeps suggests that the woman might be using a phenomenon different from magic, speculating that both their worlds have similar phenomena but operate on entirely different logics. Sasaki sees this as a potentially groundbreaking discovery and convinces Peeps to join them in learning more. As Sasaki tries to leave, his neighbor notices him and expresses concern about being out late. Sasaki hurriedly explains his situation, promising to talk next time. Meeting the woman, Hashizaki, Sasaki informs her that he'll be bringing his pet sparrow along. Hashizaki introduces herself and expresses gratitude for Sasaki's rescue. Heading to the organization, Hashizaki explains that psychics are like magicians, with powers manifesting spontaneously in one out of every 100,000 people. Once manifested, these abilities don't change, though repeated use can strengthen them. She describes her ability to manipulate water movement and temperature, and mentions the organization's role in dealing with psychics who turn to crime. Sasaki, surprised by the existence of such an organization, learns that it's a national secret. Arriving at the Paranormal Phenomenon Countermeasure Bureau, Hashizaki reveals that this will be Sasaki's workplace from now on, mentioning that she registered him earlier. Sasaki, taken aback, discovers he is considered a government official with the prospect of earning a handsome salary. Hashizaki assures him that he'll receive proper training and asks about his own psychic abilities. Sasaki finds the allure of being a government official appealing but wants to avoid combat. He demonstrates his ability to create icicles for Hashizaki, who realizes that his power complements hers. While she can manipulate water's movement and temperature, she can't create water, making Sasaki's ability to generate ice valuable for their missions. Sasaki, wanting to take things easy, is surprised when Hashizaki mentions that a psychic's paycheck has no limit and they earn more based on hard work. In his room at the bureau, Sasaki considers resting but remembers the need to stock up in the other world and pay French. Aware that they are being tailed, he takes a walk with Peeps and discusses the situation. Peeps suggests using the restroom as a pretext to teleport to the other world, where time passes differently. Sasaki informs Mark about a delay in their deal and pays French before returning. The next morning, Hashizaki arrives at Sasaki's door at 6 a.m., ready for work. Sasaki hesitates, 
expressing a desire to report to someone higher up and verify the legitimacy of the workplace. Hashizaki dismisses his concerns and suggests stopping by the bureau. The section chief, Akutsu, arrives and apologizes for the situation. He introduces himself as Sasaki's immediate superior and provides a new phone, emphasizing its importance for emergencies. Sasaki, not thrilled with the idea of constant calls, contemplates leaving the phone in the other world to avoid frequent interruptions and disable GPS tracking. Akutsu leaves, instructing Sasaki to call or text if any issues arise. The scene shifts to Sasaki undergoing a medical exam at the building. After taking an ID picture, he learns more about the agency's secretive nature, operating as a peripheral government ministry. Their public position is that of police sergeants. Sasaki realizes this is why Hashizaki carries a gun. During training, Sasaki inquires about Hashizaki, anticipating pairing up with her. The person wishes him luck, hinting that she might be troublesome. After training, Sasaki receives a 1 million yen allowance for job preparation. He plans to use the money to stock up and heads home. At home, he meets the little girl who gives him cookies in gratitude for the chocolate. She asks if the woman he was with is his girlfriend, and Sasaki clarifies that she is his superior at work. He doesn't disclose the truth due to the risks of leaking confidential information. Inside his home, Peep's agitation alerts Sasaki to a potential issue. Taking Peeps for a walk, Sasaki learns from him that someone bugged the place in his absence. Sasaki asks if they saw him checking the internet, and Peeps confirms they did not. Sasaki proceeds to disarm the camera and microphone. Afterward, Akutsu calls, acknowledging Sasaki's skills and explaining that the bug was a test. Sasaki passed by promptly addressing the situation. Akutsu emphasizes the need to gauge Sasaki's stance toward the organization, cautioning against seeing them as enemies. He mentions the challenges of handling psychics and expresses the desire to welcome an honest and skilled person like Sasaki into their ranks. After the call, Sasaki reflects on Akutsu, considering him someone around whom he must be cautious. Peeps asks if Sasaki plans to stock up that night, but Sasaki decides to do it another time, realizing that his dream of a relaxing life in another world is still distant. The episode then ends with Akutsu contemplating Sasaki as someone he can use effectively. The scene shifts to Sasaki practicing magic in the other world. Peeps is surprised by how quickly Sasaki is learning intermediate spells, and Sasaki credits it to the magic Peeps gave him. Peeps says most magic users in that world take many years to reach intermediate magic, so Sasaki's progress is exceptional. He shares that he mastered recovery and lightning magic in their latest session, noting them down on his smartphone. Still, Sasaki finds it tough to memorize all the spells. Peeps suggests Sasaki use a grimoire, and Sasaki wonders where to get one. He explains that Sasaki's smartphone is technically a grimoire since it has the spells written in it. Sasaki then mentions it's time for their meeting with Mark, and afterward, they plan to eat at a restaurant, with Peeps craving meat. The scene changes to Sasaki showing walkie-talkies to Mark, who is impressed. Sasaki explains they run on fuel, showing the batteries. Mark thinks they're great despite the fuel drawback. Sasaki is happy his new stuff is popular, so he won't be stuck with extra inventory. Mark thanks Sasaki and asks to buy all the walkie-talkies because Viscount Muller wants them due to growing tensions with a neighboring country. Mark advises Sasaki to be careful. The scene then shifts to Sasaki standing outside his restaurant, noticing that business is booming. He pays French for the month and shares some new recipes, asking him to replicate them. And Sasaki fills him in on the recipes before heading out for lunch. The next morning, Sasaki gets a call from Hashizaki, who asks him to come in for a mission. She realizes he missed several calls from the chief and wonders if he didn't receive them. Upon realizing this, Sasaki hurries to the office and apologizes for being late. At the office, he meets other psychics as the chief introduces him, mentioning that Sasaki will be working mostly with Hashizaki. After a brief greeting, the other psychics leave, and Sasaki is briefed on a mass arrest mission targeting a group of unregistered psychics operating in the city. Sasaki wonders if they're being arrested for refusing registration but the chief explains it's because one of their members used psychic powers to cause harm. The man who previously attacked Hashizaki is part of this group, and the other members are suspected as complicit. The investigation led to the discovery of their hideout, and they need to take them into custody to prevent further harm. The scene cuts to Sasaki heading to the group's hideout with other psychics. Hashizaki notices that he's nervous. So she tells him to calm down since he won't be directly involved in the fighting. The other physics also reassure him claiming they outrank the enemy psychics. Hashizaki then warns them not to be a bad influence on Sasaki, but they laugh it off. He then questions Hashizaki about her lack of fear in the face of a fight. And she responds that high risk means high rewards, revealing her excitement for the mission solely for the pay. 
Hashizaki then says she's counting on Sasaki for support, and he promises to do his best. The scene shifts to them at the group's hideout, where Sasaki wishes he had learned a barrier spell prior to this. The chief then instructs them to start the mission, and the psychics raid the area, telling the enemies to surrender. However, they find no one present, and Hashizaki senses something is off. Suddenly, they hear the officer's screams from the control room, and all communication is lost. Suddenly, an unknown psychic uses a bowling ball and pins in the hideout to attack the team. Sasaki and Hashizaki hide, and Sasaki realizes it's psychokinesis. The psychics comment that these foes were supposed to be easy, and some escape while others are taken down. Eventually, only Sasaki and Hashizaki remain. Hashizaki asks Sasaki for support, and he hands her an icicle. Hashizaki turns the icicle into water to block incoming attacks, but they find themselves on the defensive. The enemy psychic lifts one of the psychics, and Hashizaki saves him using her water abilities. She then urges Sasaki to leave, fearing for his safety, but Sasaki insists on staying as her partner. A psychic reveals herself and acknowledges the unexpected resistance. But Hashizaki turns water into ice, surprising the enemy with her temperature control. Despite her attempts to attack, the enemy dodges and manages to knock out Hashizaki, threatening to harm her further, while demanding for Sasaki to reveal himself. Feeling cornered with their squad wiped out, Sasaki decides to show himself and the girl notices his unfamiliar face. Sasaki then introduces himself, but the girl finds him unsettling and wonders if he's the source of the water Hashizaki was using. Sasaki quickly confirms this, thinking he needs to regain some ground. He then asks for the name of their group, but when she told him, Sasaki was utterly clueless. This surprised the girl because Sasaki had never heard of them. Sasaki then asks whether their group is famous, and she quickly realizes that he's a new recruit. Despite feeling exposed, Sasaki confirms he recently joined the organization and expresses the desire to meet her companions. Sasaki being unable to pinpoint their location, feels he needs to at least know how many there are. The girl remarks on Sasaki's calm demeanor, and he attributes it to his current state of ignorance. Sasaki then asks to meet her companions, but the girl declines. Disappointed, he puts away his calm and uses lightning magic to attack, but she dodges. The psychokinesis user attempts an attack but Sasaki defends himself with his magic, taking out two hidden psychics while doing so. The girl then asks what Sasaki is, and he claims to be a mere newcomer. He then proposes a draw, offering her a peaceful exit in exchange for not revealing the encounter. The girl agrees and offers him to join them, but Sasaki declines, stating he's more comfortable following the herd. Before leaving, Sasaki inquires about his superior's fate, and the girl assures him they'll be released since the fight is called off. The scene then shifts to Sasaki reporting to the chief that the enemy withdrew on their own. And the chief believes his story, while apologizing for the ordeal. He then tells Sasaki to go home and get some rest. But before doing so, Sasaki checks on Hashizaki, who turns out to be fine. She then asks him out for dinner to repay his favor. Soon after, the duo can be seen in a fancy hotel and Hashizaki thanks Sasaki for saving her. But he apologizes for her injuries, blaming his lack of ability. They then order food and make a toast to Sasaki's first mission. Hashizaki then tells Sasaki that she'll be counting on his support in the future. As Sasaki heads home, he spots a girl scavenging for food in a garbage can. At first he plans to report her to the police fearing she might be an abandoned child. But he decides against it, wanting to go home and rest. But the girl suddenly disappears and flies into a portal, leaving Sasaki puzzled. The scene shifts to Sasaki treating Peeps to a famous Kobe beef steak as a thank you for all his support. Peeps enjoys the meal, and Sasaki finds him really cute. He then shares his day with Peeps, who thinks it sounds tiring. Sasaki wishes he had learned barrier magic, and Peeps suggests healing magic would have been useful too. And Sasaki asks Peeps to help him practice magic after his meeting with Mark. After training, Sasaki plans to enjoy French's cooking and sleep in a fluffy bed. However, his plans change after talking with Viscount Muller, who reveals that a war is imminent. The Viscount explains the dire situation with the enemy army being twice the size of theirs. He asks for Sasaki's aid, but Sasaki, feeling inadequate as just a humble craftsman, doesn't want to be involved in a war. Muller acknowledges Sasaki's reservations but emphasizes the importance of his contributions. He mentions his items will greatly aid in the war. He proposes Sasaki to serve as their exclusive supplier during the war. As a noble in service to the crown, Muller is obligated to comply with the king's orders, and refusal would have consequences. Muller explains the logistical challenges they will face in gathering and transporting goods to the front lines that must be accomplished within a month. Sasaki then suggests abandoning the kingdom, but Muller suddenly brings up the Star Sage. He then tells a story of a group of mages who left the kingdom due to exploitation by certain nobles, 
leading to the decline of magical technology in the land. Then a skilled mage, the Star Sage, managed peace in their absence until a faction of resentful nobles had him killed, leading to corruption and decline in the kingdom. Mueller rejects Sasaki's suggestion to abandon the kingdom, committed to protecting its people with his last breath. Sasaki apologizes for his suggestion and promises to meet Mueller's expectations, asking for a promise in return. Shortly after leaving Mueller's estate, a visitor named Dietrich comes to visit Muller. After the encounter Peeps asks why Sasaki made such a promise, but Sasaki reassures him. Peeps predicts the kingdom's likely defeat in war. But he believes that Sasaki can use his magic to alter the outcome. Meanwhile, Sasaki plans to resolve things discreetly and visits his restaurant. He notices some chefs leaving, and Sasaki learns French's old master wants their ingredients at a reduced price. But he declined due to not wanting to betray Sasaki's trust. Sasaki then vows to protect his restaurant and plans countermeasures against this issue. He then visits Kepler Trading Company in the Republic of Lunch. And Sasaki explains he's procuring goods for a country at war, and despite concerns about timely transport, the owner agrees. As he was impressed by Sasaki's confidence and business skills, he then decided to do business exclusively with Kepler Trading Company and promised to pay with large gold coins from the kingdom, which the owner accepts. The scene then transitions to Sasaki showing Muller a warehouse full of food and other stuff, leaving Muller astonished at the quantity acquired in just a few days. Grateful, Muller acknowledges Sasaki's life-saving efforts and wonders if Sasaki possesses the ability to travel instantly like the Star Sage. Sasaki confesses but asks Muller to keep it confidential to protect them. Muller agrees, and Sasaki inquires about the origin of the Star Sage title. Muller explains it stemmed from the Sage's mastery of numerous spells. Muller thanks Sasaki again for his help, mentioning it provides him flexibility in his travels. He regrets not being as brave as Sasaki, and wishes that he could have saved the Star Sage. Not a month after the interaction, Sasaki learns of Muller's death. We are then shown Sasaki in a conversation with Akutsu, where he's promoted to an inspector due to the incident creating urgent vacancies. Sasaki reluctantly accepts, despite feeling uncomfortable about working with Hashizaki. Akutsu then explains the various methods of recruiting psychics and offers Sasaki the chance to work solo, but Sasaki agrees to collaborate with Hashizaki. Returning to his apartment, Sasaki encounters Odonari again, who offers him a shoulder massage as thanks. Sasaki declines but offers her different types of bread he bought earlier, which she appreciates. Inside, Sasaki finds Peeps watching the news and serves him cake, but Peeps remains silent. Sasaki eats the cake, but Peeps doesn't touch it at all. He then asks if Peeps was acquainted with Count Muller. And Peeps mentions they've shared drinks a few times, expressing surprise at Muller's sudden death. Sasaki wonders if Peeps' world has spells to bring back the dead, but Peeps says there isn't. Sasaki acknowledges the inevitability of death but offers to help Peeps if needed. Returning to the other world, Sasaki learns from French that the old master and his men haven't returned, but many are leaving the city after hearing of Viscount Muller's death. Mark rushes to inform Sasaki that Muller's butler has summoned them. At Muller's estate, the butler introduces Elsa, Muller's daughter, who reluctantly greets them. The butler explains a succession dispute between Elsa's elder brothers, Maximilian and Kai, for the head of the household position. Elsa dislikes Kai, and the butler requests the Herman Trading Company's assistance in caring for Elsa during the dispute. Mark initially hesitates but accepts out of gratitude for Muller's kindness. Sasaki wonders why he was summoned, and the butler mentions hearing of Sasaki's communication tools and asks if he'd be willing to sell them. Sasaki then agrees despite feeling uneasy, and the butler thanks him. The story then continues as the butler of House Muller secretly communicates with someone using the devices obtained from Sasaki. He discusses the greed of many nobles who support Elsa's brothers in the succession dispute, with hopes of ensuring a marriage that will secure their plans. He reminds the other party not to forget his compensation, anticipating his retirement. Meanwhile, Sasaki has lunch with Elsa, who enjoys the curry. Sasaki praises French's cooking skills for replicating the recipe. Elsa admires Peeps and asks to pet him, to which Sasaki hesitates but agrees. However, Elsa accidentally hurts Peeps, who screams, surprising her. She wonders if the bird spoke, but Sasaki feigns ignorance. Mark interrupts, informing Elsa she must return to the estate immediately. At the estate, the butler shows Elsa, Sasaki, and Mark bloody swords found in the backyard, belonging to her brothers. The butler explains they found signs of a battle but no trace of her brothers. He fears the worst and urges Elsa to assume her role as the head of the household, as she is the only one with a claim to the title. Sasaki suggests it might not be the right time, but the butler insists, warning that refusing would lead to the house's dissolution. Elsa expresses her reluctance to take on the title, but the butler reassures her that he will handle estate affairs until she is married and Elsa reluctantly agrees. 
Later, Mark and Sasaki leave by carriage and notice people evacuating the city upon hearing news of the king's forces being defeated at the front. Mark plans to seek shelter in the capital and invites Sasaki to join, but Sasaki declines, opting to stay behind. Which made Mark reflect on the difficult decision Elsa faces in potentially abandoning her family's lands. In another scene, Sasaki and Peeps discuss a favor Peeps needs. Sasaki assumes it's related to changing the tides of war and agrees to help. Peeps apologizes for the request and explains they'll use a different method due to the enemy's unknown location. They fly through the air using a spell, which amazes Sasaki, who expresses his desire to learn it. And Peeps agrees to teach him later. They arrive at the Ogen army's camp, where Peeps plans to eliminate them in a single blast to minimize their suffering. But after unleashing a devastating spell, they attempt to return but are attacked, causing them to be separated when Peeps erects a barrier to block the attack. As Peeps engages in a fierce battle with the strange-looking girl, Sasaki swiftly uses his water magic to soften his landing. Observing Peeps in combat, Sasaki witnesses their intense exchange of spells. Meanwhile, Sasaki encounters Viscount Mueller, who is accompanied by an injured individual. Sasaki employs his healing magic to tend to the wounded man, earning gratitude from Mueller, who introduces Sasaki as a merchant from his domain. The injured man is revealed to be Adonis, the second prince of the Hur's kingdom. Expressing surprise at Sasaki's healing abilities, Sasaki humbly downplays his skill and expresses astonishment at Mueller's survival, given reports of his demise. Mueller explains their separation from the main army during a heated battle, leading to the misconception of his death. Adonis shoulders the blame for the situation, acknowledging his own incompetence, while Mueller prepares to escort him to a nearby settlement. Sasaki readily agrees to accompany them, but their departure is hindered by arrows fired in their direction. Sasaki erects a protective barrier and retaliates with lightning magic, exposing their attackers. Mueller swiftly dispatches the adversaries, prompting gratitude from Adonis, who marvels at Sasaki's magical prowess. Mueller expresses interest in meeting Sasaki's remarkable teacher someday. The scene transitions to the trio arriving at a nearby settlement under attack by orcs. Sasaki employs his lightning magic to fend off the orcs and protect the villagers. Despite his efforts, when overwhelmed by a group of orcs, Sasaki calls upon Mueller and Adonis for assistance. They engage in battle against the orcs, but realize that there seems to be no end to their numbers. Mueller suspects that an elite orc must be leading them, explaining that it's significantly stronger than the others, requiring a full regiment to defeat. The elite orc reveals itself, and despite Sasaki's lightning magic and Mueller's attacks, it remains unfazed. Mueller vows to target the elite orc's head in their next encounter to weaken it. As they prepare for another round, Peeps finally arrives, dropping a large boulder on the elite orc. Although seemingly unaffected, Peeps summons an earth golem, a type recognized by Mueller, which effortlessly defeats the elite orc. Peeps explains that elite specimens can exist in various species, including humans, likening both himself and Sasaki to elite specimens of humanity. And Peeps apologizes for not arriving sooner. Mueller inquires about Peeps, and Sasaki introduces him as his magic teacher. Peeps apologizes for his earlier lack of greetings, and Mueller notes, Peeps' similarity to the legendary star sage in spellcasting and manner of speech. Peeps confirms his identity, expressing relief at seeing Adonis well. He explains that he crossed over to this world in his current form and apologizes for not revealing his identity sooner. Mueller feels remorse for not assisting the star sage, but Peeps reassures him, stating his desire for a peaceful life as Sasaki's companion now that the star sage has passed away. Sasaki then expresses gratitude to Peeps for his assistance in acquiring the supplies and eliminating the Ogen forces. He then requests Mueller and Adonis to keep Peeps' identity as the Star Sage secret from others, explaining that Peeps desires peace above all. Both Mueller and Adonis agree to honor this request. Peeps teleports everyone back to Mueller's estate, where they are warmly welcomed by the guards. Elsa rushes out and tearfully embraces her father, relieved to see him safe. Sasaki explains to Mark that they simply happened to encounter Mueller and Adonis, and assures everyone that they are safe now. He reassures them that Ogen no longer poses a threat, as the entire Oban Imperial army was supposedly wiped out overnight. Mueller's two sons, Maximilian and Kai, also arrive, welcoming back their father. Elsa is overjoyed to see them unharmed, and Mueller praises them for playing their roles well in the plan. He apologizes to Elsa for keeping her in the dark and explains that everything was part of a devised plan. To uncover traitors in his circle amidst the war and noble feuds, Mueller faked his death, and his sons staged a fake succession dispute, even simulating their deaths. The butler, astonished by this revelation, realizes he was kept in the dark as well. Kai reveals that information was leaked to Count Dietrich, who sought to force a marriage between his second son and Elsa to gain control of their lands. Mueller acknowledges Count Dietrich's ruthlessness and orders his soldiers to detain the butler. 
Sasaki marvels at Mueller's masterful strategy and realizes the stress that nobles endure. Elsa expresses gratitude to Sasaki for saving her father, to which Sasaki humbly responds that it was nothing, and Elsa departs. The scene shifts to a middle school girl named Otonari at her school, where she realizes it's been a few days since she last saw Sasaki. She ponders whether his usual routine or work schedule has changed, noting that he's never been absent for more than three days in the years she's known him. After school, she heads home, hoping Sasaki will return soon. Along the way, she discovers a woman's body and contacts the police. Upon their arrival, they investigate the scene and question Odonari before letting her go. Overhearing a conversation, she learns that Sasaki and Hashizaki will be handling the case together due to their division's involvement. Later, we find Sasaki at home noticing that several days have passed in this world while he was in the other. He calculates that the time he spent in the other world should have equated to only one or two days here, leading him to speculate on the variable temporal distortion between worlds. Wondering what might be causing it, he suggests reviewing their recent actions to identify any discrepancies. Recalling their recent accomplishments, including ending a war and resolving a succession dispute, Sasaki concludes that these events are unrelated to the time distortion. Hashizaki then arrives at his house, reminding him to leave a notice if he leaves and inviting him to work. In the car, Hashizaki informs Sasaki that they're recruiting a psychic, a high school student from Saitama Prefecture, due to recent reports of supernatural phenomena around him. Hashizaki expresses frustration with troublesome kids nowadays, to which Sasaki points out they are the same age. Mentally noting her maturity, Hashizaki explains the reports indicate the student has pyrokinesis but has only used it within his neighborhood without causing any incidents. Sasaki realizes they likely call for Hashizaki's assistance due to her ability to manipulate water. Agreeing, they prepare to begin their work, though Sasaki suggests a more thorough investigation first. The scene transitions to the two of them at the boys' school, where Sasaki explains that the bureau had already coordinated with the school, posing as representatives from the central government to observe the educational situation in the area. Hashizaki spots the student thereafter, and although Sasaki notes he appears like an ordinary student, Hashizaki reminds him that the student is still a psychic. They tail the student and witness other students bullying him. Hashizaki moves to intervene, but Sasaki restrains her, suggesting they observe for now. Assessing the situation, Sasaki observes that the bullying has persisted without the student using his powers in school, indicating his resilience. They agree to wait for an opportunity to approach him when he's alone. Sasaki reflects that today might be the day the student decides to use his powers in school, finding it difficult to watch but determined to preserve the student's dignity to potentially work with him in the future. Hashizaki reveals her own plan and assigns Sasaki to wait, while she handles contact and negotiations, promising to update him if needed. The scene shifts to Sasaki in a cafe, reminiscing about his previous life as an office worker eating lunch in the park and now enjoying coffee indoors. Reflecting on life's unpredictability, he decides to explore nearby supermarkets for treats for peeps during his free time. Spotting the recruit with a girl, he follows them, suspecting she might be his girlfriend and wondering about Hashizaki's whereabouts. As he observes, he recognizes the girl and realizes he might appear suspicious, prompting him to consider leaving. However, the earlier bullies arrive, expressing surprise at the boy having a girlfriend and inviting her to join them. The girl rejects their advances, leading to a confrontation where one of the bullies attempts to hit her. The boy, in a fit of anger, unleashes his pyrokinetic power, causing flames to soar and accidentally damaging a plane flying overhead, which begins to plummet. Sasaki swiftly erects a barrier to shield everyone from the falling debris and rushes to check on the girl, who turns out to be Hashizaki. Confused, she questions Sasaki's presence, and he realizes her true identity. Sasaki explains he wasn't following her but coincidentally stumbled upon them. He expresses surprise at her convincing disguise and admits he didn't expect her to be with the boy. Hashizaki reveals her intention behind the disguise and inquires about the origin of the barrier. He tries to dodge the question, and Sasaki creates ice for her, which she converts into water to incapacitate the bullies and the target. Hashizaki ponders the source of the barrier and considers the possibility of another psychic's involvement, while also speculating whether Sasaki could be a magical girl. Perplexed, Sasaki questions the term, prompting Hashizaki to explain the existence of seven magical girls worldwide, possessing inexplicable powers different from physics. She mentions a Japanese magical girl that targets psychics. Concerned about the barrier being exposed online, they agree to address it as soon as possible, aware of potential consequences. As they discuss, the magical girl Sasaki spotted earlier attacks the barrier, prompting Hashizaki to suggest leaving. Sasaki recognizes the magical girl from his neighborhood and explains his role as a police officer, emphasizing the need to resolve the situation peacefully. Meanwhile, another psychic girl, Shizuka Futari, arrives, recognized by Hashizaki for her distinct kimono color. 
Sensing trouble, Shizuka offers assistance, but the magical girl questions her psychic abilities before attacking. Shizuka deftly dodges the magical girl's attacks and notices Sasaki's barrier. Hashizaki attempts to strike Shizuka with water blasts, but some manage to hit her despite her evasion. Shizuka heals her wounds and effortlessly knocks Hashizaki unconscious, ensuring Sasaki's safety. Sasaki questions Shizuka's motives, to which she cryptically replies that she has a favor to ask. The magical girl queries Sasaki about his connection to Shizuka, leading Sasaki to agree to cooperate with Shizuka, acting as a decoy while she looks for an opening to attack. As Sasaki engages the magical girl in combat, she assumes he's a psychic, but he clarifies that he's a magical middle-aged man, using magic instead. Intrigued, the girl wonders if fairies enlisted his help as well. Meanwhile, Shizuka attempts to strike from behind but is swiftly incapacitated by the girl. Sasaki questions the girl about the fairies learning that she killed them and fashioned a scarf from their fur. Confused by her actions, Sasaki notes her ability to use magic without incantations, a concept unfamiliar to her. Realizing Sasaki's unique status, the girl ponders why he's associating with a psychic, to which Sasaki explains their chance encounter. The girl expresses her desire to eliminate the psychic, fueled by past trauma where psychics killed her family and friends. Spotting a young boy nearby, she abruptly decides to depart, vanishing through a portal, leaving Sasaki contemplating her motives. The scene then transitions to Sasaki Shizuka and the rest settling in a hotel, where Shizuka thanks Sasaki for his assistance earlier. Shizuka then reveals her interest in joining him and urges Sasaki to help her get recruited. However, he clarifies his lack of authority in making such decisions. Shizuka candidly confesses her fascination with Sasaki, highlighting his ability to create icicles, release electricity, and even block a magical girl's beam. She suggests that he might be concealing these powers from the Bureau. Attempting to feign ignorance, Sasaki is taken aback when Shizuka promises to not tell anyone. In the meantime, Akutsu contacts Sasaki regarding their encounter with the magical girl and the cargo plane incident. Sasaki explains the situation, blaming the magical girl for the damages. Sasaki then informs Shizuka that the chief has agreed to arrange an interview for her. While discussing Shizuka's potential employment, Sasaki warns her about potential surveillance hinting at the chief possibly installing cameras. Suddenly Hashizaki regains consciousness, and she questions the legitimacy of such actions. Sasaki explains that it's a precautionary measure against potential spies. Sasaki then suggests returning to the bureau since they've already secured their target. However, before leaving, Sasaki expresses a desire to explore a store on the hotel's first floor. Inside the store, Sasaki buys some jam while Shizuka asks about his preferences. Sasaki, not a fan of sour flavors, contemplates using pickled plums to tenderize meat, which amazed Shizuka, who remarks on his lack of understanding of Japanese plums. Outside the office, Hashizaki observes Sasaki's closeness with Shizuka, noting the gift she gave him. Sasaki reveals that it's homemade pickled plums, and Hashizaki warns him about Shizuka's dangerous abilities. She is an A-rank psychic with the power of energy drain, capable of sapping the life energy from anyone she touches. Also despite her appearance, she may well be over a century old. Later, they rendezvous with Akutsu, who expresses dissatisfaction with their delayed arrival. He informs them that the boy has been taken to the appropriate department. And Hashizaki brings up the unsettling revelation about the section chief installing cameras in employees' homes, labeling it as sexual harassment. Akutsu then tells her not to worry because he prefers men, which made Sasaki feel uneasy. He then clarifies his lack of interest in Sasaki and emphasizes the effectiveness of the cameras in identifying spies. Hashizaki finally agrees and requests the removal of the cameras from her residence, which Akutsu promptly agrees to. In a lighter moment, Sasaki offers Akutsu some homemade pickled plums, sparking a surprising reaction from Akutsu who, despite his pickiness, appreciates the flavor. Hashizaki, skeptical, tries a plum herself but finds it too sour. Amidst this exchange, Akutsu mentions the interview arrangement that Shizuka requested. The scene shifts to Sasaki returning home, encountering Shizuka along the way. She reveals something from a thermal camera, claiming to have seen a talking bird in his room. Sasaki listens as she speculates about the theories of the bird. Although initially concerned, Sasaki realizes the potential benefits of forming an alliance with her, given her wealth and connections. And he cautiously agrees to consider her proposal, acknowledging the risks involved. The following day, Peeps meets Shizuka and negotiates terms, proposing an exchange of valuable items through her connections instead of monetary payment. Sasaki, wary of workplace repercussions, agrees to this arrangement, provided it doesn't cause issues. Shizuka also agrees, understanding the need for discretion. Meanwhile, Shizuka discusses her transfer with Akutsu via video call, assuring him of her intentions despite her past affiliations. Akutsu acknowledges her skills as a psychic but remains cautious about her motives. 
Shizuka wants Akutsu to consider her proposal favorably, but he explains that official employment within the bureau is not possible at the moment. However, he agrees to allow her to assist with their work unofficially. Shizuka accepts this arrangement, expressing her willingness to work part-time or on contract basis as long as she can operate under the bureau's name. And Akutsu reassures her that Sasaki will be her supervisor in the team. Sasaki, surprised by this responsibility, voices his concern about his limited authority. Akutsu, however, grants him the same level of authority as Hashizaki, emphasizing his policy of promoting excellent workers. With Shizuka now under Sasaki's guidance, they celebrate her acceptance into the bureau. During their celebration, Shizuka asks whether Sasaki enjoyed the pickled plums she gave him. Although he hadn't tasted them himself, he shares that others appreciated them. Shizuka then compliments Sasaki's character, noting his honesty and charm, which she believes is why the chief trusts him. Sasaki believes the chief's trust is due to his powers rather than personal qualities. Nevertheless, Shizuka suggests that their destinies are now intertwined. As they discuss their future collaboration, Hashizaki suddenly joins them. She questions Sasaki's sudden responsibility for Shizuka and joins them for dinner. Later, she expresses her gratitude to Sasaki for handling the previous day's situation well. She presents him with homemade bento, wrapped with pickled plums, as a token of appreciation. Sasaki is touched by her gesture and promises to enjoy them at home. At the restaurant, Sasaki savors the fried eggs, appreciating their taste. Hashizaki is pleased to hear his approval but feels uncomfortable when Shizuka also partakes. Shizuka teasingly questions if Hashizaki is jealous of their closeness, to which she denies bashfully. The scene transitions to Sasaki and Peeps engrossed in a Japanese drama. It becomes evident that Peeps is captivated by it. In the parallel world, the king addresses the nobles, emphasizing the kingdom's current state of chaos. He attributes the Ogen Empire's defeat to a battle between notorious war criminals. And to anticipate future clashes, he announces a new measure, that all rightful heirs can now participate in politics. In five years, the throne will go to the one achieving the most remarkable results, surprising everyone. The narrative then shifts to Mark strolling with a friend. The friend mentions Mark's fortunate early information on the war's end, leading to substantial profits. A near collision with a carriage ensues, and Mark is accused of hitting the noble's carriage. It is then revealed that his manager, Herman, is inside the carriage. The story then cuts to Sasaki preparing for his trading day. As Sasaki is about to leave, an aide informs him of a letter from Count Muller. Outside Muller's residence, Sasaki observes a change in the guard's formality. Muller then informs Sasaki about the king's recent measures involving royalty and nobility. Sasaki, surprised, learns that legitimate heirs can now engage in politics, with the throne going to the most accomplished in five years. Peeps expresses concern about the royal family's fate and suspects an unexpected event. And Moe discloses the intense conflict between nobles and urges Sasaki to leave for the Republic of Lunge due to the escalating situation. Despite his offer, Sasaki declines, expressing a desire to continue business in the town. He proposes showing Muller their products, leading to a reluctant agreement. However, before they proceed, a messenger from Herman Trading Company arrives with an urgent message. Meanwhile Elsa was secretly observing them as the messenger arrives to deliver news of Mark's arrest for disrespecting a noble. Muller questions the messenger for details, learning that Mark was accused of hitting Count Dietrich's carriage, although he was innocent. Sasaki then concludes that Mark's own manager orchestrated the arrest, fearing Mark's success after the war. Sasaki decides to visit Mark in prison. Muller provides Sasaki with a dagger, symbolizing his authority, to legitimize Sasaki's words. Sasaki, on his way to the prison, contemplates the political implications of Count Dietrich's attack on Muller. Initially Peeps offers his magical assistance, but Sasaki wishes for a diplomatic approach. And upon reaching the prison, Sasaki gains entry with Muller's dagger, while being cautioned about a knight loyal to Count Dietrich. Inside, Sasaki finds Mark and apologizes for the delay. He heals Mark's injuries and assures him of Muller's efforts to prove his innocence, though the knight remains skeptical. Sasaki then requests the knight to deliver a message to Count Dietrich. He advises the Count to investigate the substantial profits Mark generated from the recent conflict with the Empire. The Knight initially dismisses Sasaki's words as nonsensical, but Sasaki insists it's for the Count to consider. The scene shifts to Sasaki meeting Joseph to discuss opening a trading company in the city. Sasaki seeks Kepler's investment and support for this venture. But Joseph questions the reason for accepting such a deal, prompting Sasaki to showcase his products and propose limiting wholesale to a single client to build brand recognition. And Joseph agrees to this arrangement, leading Sasaki to name the new company the Mark Trading Company as a tribute to Mark's significance in his life. The scene then transitions to Sasaki contemplating potential trade goods in the market. And Peeps proposes trading with gold due to its scarcity in Sasaki's world, 
emphasizing its reliability as an investment. Sasaki agrees and suggests using gold coins, which they plan to melt into ingots to avoid detection. Impressed by Peep's quick understanding, he assigns Peeps the task of melting the gold while he secures wooden boxes for transportation. Meanwhile, Elsa informs French about Mark's imprisonment, prompting French to advocate for Mark's immediate rescue. However, Elsa explains that her father, despite heading to negotiate, cannot retrieve Mark without permission due to opposition from someone of equal rank. Sasaki then finishes preparing the boxes and wonders about Peep's progress. But suddenly the maid informs him of a visitor, Elsa, who questions Sasaki about Mark's situation. Sasaki then assures her of their efforts to rescue Mark and acknowledges her kindness. But unexpectedly Peeps arrives, apologizing for the delay. Upon realizing his mistake he tries to deceive Elsa by chirping, which resulted in Sasaki introducing Peeps as his unique familiar with language and magic abilities. Sasaki then requests Elsa to keep it confidential, and she understands and apologizes to Peeps for previously hurting him in their previous encounter. Sasaki then packs the gold into boxes, prompted by the maid's notification of a visitor named French. Sasaki meets French to discuss some things. Meanwhile, Elsa discreetly observes the interactions. But when Sasaki returns to his world with the cargo, the scene shifts to him at a warehouse with Shizuka. And as Shizuka opens the box she is surprised to find a human girl inside. The scene then cuts to Elsa's family searching everywhere but couldn't find her. Meanwhile, in the real world Shizuka was surprised to see humans there. She noticed that Elsa's clothes were too fancy for a costume. And Elsa asked Sasaki who Shizuka was. Sasaki wanted to talk to Elsa alone, but Shizuka wanted to listen too. Sasaki knew he couldn't lie to Shizuka anymore. But Peeps told him not to worry because Shizuka can't understand their language, due to Sasaki's language magic which adapts his words instantly. Realizing this relieved Sasaki, because this means Elsa and Shizuka won't be able to understand each other. Sasaki begins to question Elsa and she then confesses that she thought Sasaki was behind Mark's arrest. Elsa saw the huge amounts of gold that Sasaki had just gotten, which made her think that Sasaki just got compensated for Mark's arrest. Sasaki then explained that they actually needed the money to save Mark. But Elsa wasn't sure if she could trust him. Sasaki then promised that he wouldn't betray her family. Suddenly, Shizuka tried to hurt Elsa, but Peeps stopped her. Peeps then proceeded to place a curse on Shizuka. The curse will spread around her body every time she harbors ill intent towards them which will eventually lead to death. Shizuka tried to resist Peeps' curse, but it was no use. Realizing her predicament, Shizuka abandoned her aggression and admitted her failed plan to manipulate Sasaki. Concerned for Elsa's safety, Sasaki decided to send her home. However, Elsa still had many questions. She demanded answers about their world and their intentions. And Sasaki, realizing the importance of their relationship with Count Muller, decided to be honest with her. He offered to show her around Tokyo, hoping to build trust. As they toured the city, Elsa was amazed by the sights. She then questioned Sasaki's intentions on visiting their world. Sasaki then explained that he wanted to foster good relations between their worlds and enjoy peace and good food. Shizuka, feeling left out, tried to join the conversation, but Sasaki redirected her attention by complimenting her kimono. After enjoying some crepes, they encountered a new reporter. Sasaki, wary of drawing attention, redirected the reporters and hurried away. But suddenly, a child was about to fall into the river. But Elsa instinctively used magic to save him, prompting Sasaki to ask Shizuka to handle the situation discreetly. Shizuka quickly got rid of all the evidence, and they decided to flee the scene. As they fled, Shizuka worried about the involvement of the bureau. But Sasaki assured her that he had followed the protocol. Sasaki then realized that they were already surrounded by bureau agents, who had already been watching them closely. The scene then shifts to Sasaki and the others meeting Akutsu, who praises Sasaki's efforts in finding the psychic. Sasaki explains that Elsa is a friend of Shizuka's and speaks a minorly used language. He emphasizes that their meeting is purely coincidental. Akutsu respects the situation and refrains from pressing Elsa further and Shizuka apologizes for any trouble caused. Akutsu then reveals his request. He wants Shizuka to neutralize a powerful psychic. The target was the psychonesis who previously worked with Shizuka before. She then realizes that this is likely a test for her bureau admission. Akutsu then assigns Sasaki to support her, leaving Shizuka with a daunting task. Later, Sasaki sips tea as Elsa expresses her desire to learn more about the world. She hopes to share her knowledge with her world. But Sasaki regrets that he can't allow it due to strict government oversight. He explains the consequences of Elsa being without proper identification and the risk of imprisonment. Elsa then ponders the vulnerability of their world against potential attacks from Sasaki's more advanced world. Elsa insists on taking action for her world's sake, but Sasaki reassures her that her world isn't as vulnerable as she believes. P. 
Peep agrees, explaining the limitations of weapons in this world due to most of it being machinery. The relieved Elsa then teases Sasaki about his serious expression, noting that he's been lecturing her all day, resembling her father. Sasaki quickly apologizes, realizing he's been too stern. Elsa reflects on her father's worry, but Peep assures her he'll explain everything to him. They decide to explore more of the world together and watch Japanese dramas. Not long after, Shizuka joins them, confirming the goods quality and agreeing on payment terms with Sasaki. However, Sasaki negotiates the payment in forms of specific items, intending to use them for other purposes. Shizuka agrees, allowing Sasaki to bypass further questioning from his superiors. After securing the business deal and with hopes of regaining custody of Mark, Sasaki proceeds to take Elsa back to her world. The scene shifts to the French visiting Mark in prison, bringing him food as requested by Sasaki. Mark, grateful for the company, notes the horrible conditions. Meanwhile, Sasaki can be seen escorting Elsa back home, where she apologizes to her father, who embraces her warmly. He apologizes to Sasaki for the trouble Elsa caused, but Sasaki insists it was their fault. Sasaki then asks about Mark's situation, but Count Muller reports no progress despite discussions with Count Dietrich. Just then, they're interrupted by a visitor, Herman. However, Elsa eavesdrops as they converse, prompting Kai to gently lecture her for disappearing unexpectedly. Elsa acknowledges this, and the focus returns to Herman's conversations. Herman expresses regret for the trouble caused by their staff and reveals Count Dietrich's decision. Mark is to be executed within the month. Initially, Muller vows to intervene, but Herman explains that Dietrich's decision is final. But despite Muller's efforts, Dietrich insists that Mark must pay for his actions. Peep comments on the false act while Sasaki emphasizes the urgency of the situation. Muller then resolves to negotiate with Count Dietrich, even offering money for more time. Sasaki ponders the relationship between Count Dietrich and Herman, suspecting it's linked to a new storefront. He questions Muller about Dietrich's character, learning he's a ruthless ruler skilled in internal affairs. Sasaki then compares Dietrich to his own section chief, finding resemblance in the two people. Muller reveals the long-standing feud between their houses, including past wars over land. He believes Dietrich aims to exploit their partnership with Herman Trading Company for profit. And Sasaki expresses his desire to accompany Muller for negotiations. On their way to the inn, Peeps questions Sasaki's intentions. He explains he wants to measure Dietrich's character firsthand. Upon arriving, Sasaki notices a young man leaving, then he proceeds to introduce himself to Dietrich as a merchant. Dietrich acknowledges Sasaki's previous aid in Prince Adonis's return and accepts the gift, a transceiver. Dietrich discusses Sasaki's reputation for unique items and offers to spare Mark if Sasaki agrees to sell exclusively to him. But Sasaki asks for time to consider the offer. Dietrich agrees to postpone Mark's execution by a month, hoping Sasaki will make a wise decision. And Muller apologizes for involving Sasaki, but Sasaki reassures him. Suddenly French arrives in a panic, questioning Mark's fate. And Sasaki requests two to three weeks from Muller, promising to do everything to save Mark. Peeps tries to offer his assistance but Sasaki explains he has another plan, requiring visits to various places. Meanwhile, Herman learns of the postponement, and Dietrich sees it as an opportunity to gain control over Sasaki and Herman Trading Company. The scene then shifts to Sasaki being assisted by a maid named Mary. He tips her generously, and discusses his plan with Peeps, emphasizing the need for cash. They then visit Joseph's place to sell goods, and Sasaki arranges future sales. Suddenly Matisse, a friend of Joseph's, arrives seeking advice about lending money to a feudal lord. But Sasaki suspects a connection to Dietrich, and asks to join in their conversation. The scene then shifts to Odonari waiting for Sasaki outside his door, hearing voices inside his apartment. Sasaki exits, surprising Odonari, who questions his plans. He explains that he forgot something at the office and left. He then receives a call from Shizuka, realizing he's three hours late for their meeting. Sasaki apologizes, mentioning unexpected trouble, and promises to pick up what they agreed on. Elsa and Kai wait anxiously for their father and brother. And Elsa expresses concern for Sasaki, believing in his abilities. Mueller and Maximilian then return, reporting success. And French visits Mark, assuring him that Sasaki and the others will rescue him soon. In another location, Herman celebrates, confident in Mark's imminent execution.